I will request all to mention your name and membership number in chat box for CEP hours. We will start the session in next one or two minutes. Let's start the session. Good evening. Myself, CMA Vinayak Kulkani and CMA Ashish Bhausa welcome you all for the series of webinars on Excel Macro. Today is our third session. In today's session, we are going to cover MSG box, input box, file dialog box, assigning macro to buttons and shapes. Our speaker for the entire series is Sri Nachiket Pendakar sir, Microsoft Certified Trainer and Excel Expert. I will request uh, sir to start the session. Thank you Vinayak sir and wishing everyone a good evening. I think there is some uh, issue with respect to my lights. So my face is appearing a little dark. Just give me one second. Okay, now it's somewhat better. But more than my face, what is important is uh, the Excel macros. So irrespective of anything, we will now get started. Uh, so what did we learn the other day? That is day before yesterday. I'll have a quick brief recap of what we did. Uh, and let me share my screen for that purpose. Just a minute. Uh, okay, so I hope my screen is visible to everyone. So we started with these files. On the first day, we learned how to record a macro. Okay, macro recorder. Prior to that, how to enable the developer tab. I'm just going with the content pointers. Okay, and I'm not repeating the uh, the nitty gritties of that. But the security settings we saw macro security then how to enable the developer tab. Then we saw how we can record it, how we can view it. So we go to the developer tab, visual basic or the keyboard shortcut is alt F11. And then the VBA window opens up as a separate window. And in that window, we explored using that window, we explored uh, the code and just got ourselves a little familiar with VBA. And when it comes to VBA, we are not looking at a new language necessarily. Uh, it is a new language beyond any doubt. I'm not saying it isn't. Uh, it is a language known to us. But when I say it is not a new language in the sense because it is largely based on uh, English and Excel. So if you know English and if you know your Excel concepts like worksheet, cells, columns, rows, the same words are used, same terms are used. So I won't say it is unfamiliar to you or it is something entirely new to you. Just that we need to be a little more familiar with the grammar of it. Okay, so we got some confidence over the past uh, uh, today is uh, Wednesday, right? So it will be like past three sessions, whatever we have had. One, three or two or three sessions, whatever. Two sessions, I think we have concluded. So uh, we got some better familiarity now. And with every passing day, we will have more and more familiarity. 
then we discussed what are variables and what are loops in the previous session that i would like to just uh, perhaps open the file and discuss okay why are we discussing variables and loop why did we discuss this at all that's because there was a problem statement which we defined that if we are processing a, uh, a data set any process if i have to generalize i can say it can be any process which i am trying to run and for that how many records are there in the data the number of records will vary in every round of execution yes or no if you are doing it as a daily activity then every day you will have different number of records so can we make the number of records variable okay we made some initial uh, naive attempts by either making a manual edit every time or by defining an arbitrary large value but then we also discussed that that is not necessarily the best way so what could be a better way better way is to employ variables so we discussed this file last time okay uh, whenever i open a file which contains macros thanks to the security setting we saw this like macro security the macros may be disabled with a notification so they are disabled to begin with but then there is a notification flash so this is the notification here local at one okay and it says macros have been disabled do you want to enable it so if i want to enable if i trust this source of uh, source of this file and i want to perhaps use the macros i'll enable the content and now the macros become usable till you don't press that enable content button the macros are not usable okay we at some point we saw the different types of variables variables can be of different type and if i go to the developer tab and press this visual basic button just maximize this then you might see that uh, we use a command called dim okay dim company as variant or dim x as integer dim last record as boolean and so on okay so you can use dim command to assign a type to a variable how should a variable be a variable can be purely alphabetic like this word company or it can be alpha numeric i don't know whether there is an example over here but it can be something like abc123 that's alpha numeric you may involve some selected special characters for example here's an here's a variable last underscore record so last underscore record uses underscore which is an acceptable special character not all special characters are allowed for example you cannot use dot okay you cannot use dot you cannot use double inverted comma single inverted comma those have some other meanings okay but underscore can be used ampersand cannot be used ampersand is used for concatenate and by ampersand i mean that and symbol which is on top of seven that that is a special character cannot be used in a variable but you can use dollar so dollar that you have on top of four that can be used right so uh, normally i don't uh, really employ special characters this is my personal style i actually avoid special character i don't see any requirement for that only exception being underscore when i decide to use a multi word variable that also is not a very common thing because uh, if i use multiple words the variable length will be quite long it is inconvenient to use a very long expression as a variable but occasionally when i use that then i use underscore that's the only special character i use to be honest with you okay and then we uh, just went through this pre written macro code this this is not really a macro code i mean i cannot say this is a genuine macro okay these are some codes portions of some code some lines uh, just to explore the topic of variables okay from top to bottom it is not a macro which is doing some task okay but at a later point of time we'll take up some macros and uh, we will examine them so i, I have shared some files which contain among other things the uh, uh, the pre written mac uh, the actual macros that were written okay and we will also take up some activities where we will write the macro in the class so we will take up a task and we will write a macros okay we will do that but before we do that we must get ourselves familiar with some basics 
so that uh, initial uh, investment we need to do so we got ourselves familiar with variables hello, that was hello, one hello, thing hello, we saw hello, that hello, yeah, hello? excel excel no jana excel excel no request uh, all others to mute your mic please yeah i will request all others to mute your mic please please keep your mics on mute mode by default like as you log in to the meeting the first thing you can check is whether the mic is on mute the camera can be on or off that is uh, your choice but at least the mic by default should be on mute otherwise the background noise is audible sometimes and uh, uh, that causes a little bit of disturbance uh, yeah so can to continue with that the next topic that we saw the previous day was loops so what is a loop loop is going round and round in circles and that is actually achieving economy of coding so we took the same example this was the data it is 11 records okay and for these 11 records if i am supposed to put the formulas what we did on the first day so one idea for that could be if i go to this loops then we have uh, we saw this first for next loop in that what i'm essentially doing is i'm involving a variable called i okay i am using a command called cells what is cells command cells command uh, if i go to any blank line just observe no, no need to do this just observe if i go to any blank line and if i write cells open bracket uh it's as good as a function in excel okay so you can see two arguments there is a row index and there is a column index it's an ordered pair so i comma 9 will have a different meaning and 9 comma i will have a different meaning so the order in which you write i and 9 is very important here first thing is row second thing is column so i am telling excel that i am talking about the i throw okay and the ninth column and what do i want excel to do that in cells using the cells command i throw and ninth column in that i want excel to put this that is the formula equal to rc into square bracket minus 7 multiplied by rc into square bracket minus 6 we discussed this concept last time the cost of repetition i would like to mention again that uh, this r1c1 notation is my preferred notation okay so i get this as equal to rc minus 7 into rc into square bracket minus 6 and this formula gets inserted here if i go to formulas and show formulas then you can see that in every cell it's the same formula right the same formula is getting repeated i is a variable we ran this loop last time Uh, just in case uh, it has escaped from your memory no problem uh, we will be running the other loops okay but what we had done was i is a variable and i assumes values ranging from 2 to 11 so starting from the second row going up to the 11th row these lines get repeated in terms of execution okay so there is repeated execution just excuse me for a moment Uh, these two lines are repeated again and again and again and again and as you do that that is economy because the other alternative could be this is another possibility okay instead of loop what you could have done what is possible is you write it this way cells 2 comma 9 and 2 comma 10 is Three comma ten is this cells. Four comma nine and four comma ten is this, and so on. This could be the other alternative. This is the alternative for that for next loop. You want to process this for from the second row till the eleventh row. You write it by using constants instead of variables. You use constants. Second row, third row, fourth row, right till eleventh row. just imagine 
from second row to 11th row that means you are going to require 10 pairs so 20 lines of code needs to be written is it sensible to write a 20 lines uh, portion of code or should we write only two lines or maybe four lines if you consider four and next so four lines is an economy in comparison with 20 lines and this is only because I'm talking about 2 to 11. 2 to 11, both included are 10 numbers. Correct. What if I say 2 to 1100? So then we are talking about 1100 into 2. So 20 to 100 codes, uh, lines of code. Whereas if, if it is a loop, 2 to 1100 means you just have to put two more zeros here. Are you understanding the idea behind loop? I want to repeat some action n number of times starting from 1 till n or 2, 2 to till n, whatever. From a lower limit to upper limit, n number of times I want to repeat. I will enclose that in a pair of commands called loop. So there is a start command and there is an end command as far as the loop is concerned. So this is the first line of the loop and this is the last line of the loop. In between whatever you write will be repeated n number of times again and again. What we are doing is nothing else but efficiency or economy in writing the codes. Sir. Okay, that is the I, sole motto sorry. of loops. Yes, please go ahead. Can I interrupt for a minute, please, please? Yeah, please, please. Go yeah, ahead. When we when we're going for a, a micro as such on a particular Excel file and we run the micro, the whole of the process which has been captured in a VBS mode of a micro will be activated, right? In that process, Correct. the loop will all automatically be activated. So what is, where is no, the need no. for writing? Loop doesn't get activated. That's the problem. Actually, in the recording process, the loop doesn't get activated. Loop is a command which you are supposed to know as a programmer and you are supposed to write that in your code. So macros recorder is, uh, is just a starting point. It's just a launch pad. Okay, you are a chartered accountant or a cost accountant or a company secretary or a, uh, maybe some other, you know, commerce professional, some kind of, okay. So, uh, how will you step into the shoes of a programmer? That becomes a challenge. So, Microsoft says, okay, use my recorder facility. But that is not the ultimate thing. Recorder cannot do everything. So that's where we need to learn some codes. And I'm trying to just share the codes with the help of examples. So with examples, it will be more meaningful uh, rather than just making an academic discussion. So that way I'll try to share. So there are two things. One thing is you need not memorize the codes while I'm sharing the codes. So I've shared one more file. Uh, this was shared initially called a macro code library. Okay, there was a prefix number 99. Okay, so 99 macro code library. If you check in the downloaded material, there was one file with that name. So there I've made a compilation of uh, more frequently required codes. That is point number one. Point number two, you can always Google the code. So Google has been a great facility or if I just extend the term, Google is a brand, but basically search engine. If you, you make use of search engines and you search, then you get the code. Anything and everything is actually, there are multiple web pages already in existence. So you have a the repository of the code on your browser. So why do you need to memorize the code? So uh, code can be availed, just that we need to know what we are supposed to do. What kind of procedure we want to follow, what kind of controls we want to incorporate. If you are clear with respect to your logic, if you are clear with respect to the flow of the process, then you can fetch the code. You don't know the code, no problem. Just Google on what you are searching for and you will get relevant portions of code, which you need to assemble. You need to copy paste and assemble one below the other. And that way you need to compose your macro. So we'll see that we will take help of either the code library or and or the Google to do that. So we will at the right point of time, we'll step into that shoes. But to answer your question in a single sentence, basically recorder doesn't record many uh, statements of code. 
because recorder can record only those things which you can do in excel sheet what can you do in excel sheet so there is in excel sheet using these commands you can never indicate okay using the ribbon or something you can never indicate the concept of loop right so what you can do normally in excel the same thing can be translated into code by way of recorder that's it there are many other ideas which you can implement as a developer that is not uh, that simply cannot get recorded okay so that's how it is so anyways this is what we did last time so i would like to do one thing i'll just click on the show formulas once more i'll bring it to the normal view okay uh, i would like to quickly demonstrate what if i don't use r1c1 okay yes sir, some, somebody sir. has some question yes, yes some more one more small clarification like okay. like we we have to write these codes like defining the variables and then defining the uh, mm. loop as such and so on and so forth so all these yeah. codes will be activated oh, yeah. to generate a particular output mm. in case of or uh, uh, we are right. working on some excel sheets as such right right uh so yeah uh, those codes are activated i mean those codes are active so long as you are uh, is your question uh, sir i'm i'm sorry i am not sure whether i have understood your question so basically your question is are the codes active no, my, my, my 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 understanding is that one it through developer it is only one micro we are which we can activate for generating certain response in a uh, or output in a excel sheet as such but there's a limitation as you said that's for the initial understanding of the developer is required but for later stages you for better results and for better you uh, know for for la large number of data and for more computation and calculation you need to develop certain bbf co micros as such together and then Correct. i think this has to be activated to generate the response that's what my question i hope uh, i am able to uh, so basically uh, so there is nothing to be activated it's just that you need to compose the code okay now how you compose whether you write the line from your end uh, out of your memory okay uh, see if you are writing a letter in english then we will compose it directly based on our memory of the language okay we know english so we can compose a letter in english now we don't know vba i mean i don't think we have reached to that level where we can write a vba code so maybe you will not write it from your memory but then you can do a copy paste in any case uh, a composition is required that's all i am saying a composition is required beyond a point uh, purely recording and then just looking at the recorded macro may not uh, be 100% fruitful and then you can go for a combination of the two so you are doing some process you want to automate it okay just do the process once a uh, significant proportion in fact majority proportion i would say 80 70 to 90% of your code will be ready thanks to the recording but just to bring more controls into it to allow scalability you need to involve variables loops at appropriate places so for that purpose you need to use certain commands which you can copy from either the library or by googling okay so that approach you can use right now right now i will still say any anything that you automate that uh, you do the record i think this will become clearer i'm not sure whether i'm completely lucid and clear and at this part uh, but once we take up some activities on creating macro from a scratch then it will become clear but let's go to that step by step right now let's not worry about that too much let's just explore the basics okay we need to first understand abcd it's like you know understanding debit credits let's first understand debit credits then balance sheet is something we'll reach to that part okay right let's move on for now so uh, i am ha huh. so this we have written in r1c1 notation what if we don't write this in r1c1 notation okay so i'll just demonstrate it once okay if i use the recorder or even if i don't use the recorder but what was what, how how do we write it as per the r1c1 notation 
so it will be b2 into c2 correct b2 multiplied by c2 and this formula will be uh what was it so seventh column will be i think i column i g h this is i column i think okay h column h i j k okay so uh, i'll just I'll remove the r1 c1 reference type so that's g column okay so this formula basically g2 minus i2 what if i write it as g2 minus i2 okay equal to b2 into c2 and then g2 minus i2 what if i write it this way okay what i'll do is i'll just run it just watch it don't do it there is no great reason for you to do it just understand the concept that's sufficient i'll resize my window suitably so that you can see it okay if required i'll use magnifier uh, i understand that for many of you you have already adjusted your windows in such a way so that 50% of your screen is uh this ms teams and 50% is uh your own excel so i'm just magnified i hope the view is clear to everybody so what am i going to do now i'll clear the existing working i'll just run this loop the second loop i mean the loop which involves how do i start i press f8 and i just start the procedure f8 is the keyboard shortcut and because i'm not keen on this loop i'm keen on this other loop okay i'll just click and drag you can always click and drag and that way uh, in this break mode you are right now in break mode you can see the word break here in break mode you can always push it ahead pull it back because you are effectively in testing and debugging stage okay so i want to test it when i press f8 the loop starts and then this first formula is inserted how the formula is inserted b2 into c2 okay and i press f8 then this is there as i go ahead now i value will be incremented by 1 i initially was 2 now it becomes 3 so in the third row we are going to enter but what are we entering in the third row if i go to the third row it is b2 into c2 okay fourth row No, not fourth row. Sorry, third row, tenth column. Again, I get zero. Zero is fine, but why did I get zero? What am I subtracting? I'm subtracting these two. I have already moved on to the third row, but still, the processing is happening for the second row. Correct. The formulas entered are for the second row. And as I press F8, F8, and I go ahead. Yeah, somebody has some question. So when when we when we see that in the previous one, like when we see RC one RC RC minus three and minus RC bracket one minus one, it is basically taking a relative relative terms as such. Whereas correct, second, correct, correct, correct. Exactly. It is taking like the so, correct, correct, correct. So because I have written here equal to B two into C two, it's writing B two into C two in every row. That becomes my challenge. Okay. Uh, so i'm just demonstrating it that how excel is going to behave if i finish this loop na no? sorry I'm, for the interruption I, I, i just wanted to understand yeah 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 that's exactly what is happening what is written over here is being reproduced by the macro here so macro doesn't care what is your i throw what did you write in rhs equal to b2 into c2 so equal to b2 into c2 is the exact expression in excel that is in normal excel actually this is relative reference this is also relative reference ordinarily what i do after defining the formula like this as a pure business user i copy and i paste it down when i do a copy paste then this b2 into c2 is automatically revised to b3 into c3 and that is revised to b4 into c4 that doesn't happen when you put this formula as a part of loop and that is a big challenge 
that is a big difficulty okay so just in case somebody has a doubt that why at all we need to learn this new notation new way of referring to cells because i am otherwise constrained if i write a formula in this fashion the formula will be repeated in its exact expression i mean if that b2 into c2 will be repeated for all the rows okay excel will not pay attention to the fact that my row is changing what i have written is b2 into c2 it will be taken on face value okay obviously inserting dollars is not going to help inserting dollars is anyways making it fixed even without dollars it is not remaining as relative okay so that's my problem over here okay so that's where we must use these ones especially if you are going to use formulas then the relative ref, uh, the r1c1 notation is much more useful because in r1c1 notation when i say rc into bra square bracket minus 7 it is uniform that that idea is uniform in every cell okay see you may assign dollars or you may not assign dollars in any case i mean whether you press f4 or you don't press f4 the formula in the column room remains the same okay uh, once you enter it in r1c1 notation the formula remains the same throughout the column as you when you copy paste it's the same expression and that helps me especially in the context of macros okay this was more a discussion and a demonstration on the r1c1 notation why it is important why it is critical in fact for the success of macros because otherwise you build a loop and you enclose it in your normal a1 notation it won't help it simply won't serve the purpose right so this is my composition i will do one thing this is only for demonstration so i won't really delete it but i'll disable it by assigning a single inverted comma at the beginning okay if i put a single inverted comma at the beginning then the executable code becomes non executable it gets disabled and that the obvious indicator is green color right is everyone following the concept is everyone getting the point that i am trying to drive is it is it, i hope everybody is getting the idea yes sir thank you yeah okay let me just check it okay and it is getting loaded okay let's move on to the main learning for the day okay and that is with respect to the other loop variations so we just began with the concept of loop that day we haven't really finished it so let's go ahead and finish it okay so just for clarity or for better view i am going to close this project explorer for now i request everyone to open this file i request everyone to come to the vba code for this file i request everyone to you know uh, keep this procedure on loops as the active one okay i hope everyone is with me you have opened the file you have opened vba window you are on loops are you if the answer is yes press f8 we are not going to run the macro at once okay if, if you want to run it at once 100% from first line to last line you would press this green button okay the keyboard shortcut for that is f5 but we are more keen on exploring every line and understanding it step by step so i'll press rather f8 okay f8 is in the run tab if you go to run tab sorry uh, where is it sorry not in run tab uh, it's in i think in one of these debug sorry it is in debug so this is the basically step into okay step by step execution the keyboard shortcut is f8 it's in debug tab Okay, so I'll press F8. Okay, this is the debugging tab. Add step step into. Then I press F8. Comes here. Uh, this loop we have examined once, so I'm not going to run this loop again. Before we run the next loop, I think let's clear whatever is written in I and J column. So I'll come to Excel. There might be something existing in I and J column. Please clear it so that uh, we'll have a blank slate before we begin the. next thing and i'm not so keen on this loop which we anyways discussed the other day let us come another come to another example of for next loop 
where we have the uh, i think this is what i wrote the other day okay based on somebody's question but uh, i'm not talking about this also i want you to come to this for next loop using a condition to exit the loop okay let's jump to that okay uh the file that i originally sent had this loop as the next one j, j loop okay so i'll click and drag and i'll push this down till this i equal to 2 okay re, re, let it rest at i equal to 2 oh yeah okay this i equal to 2 uh, is not really having any great meaning over here <coughs> i have kept it here just to rest i need something to rest it so i equal to 2 Okay, is everybody ready? If everyone's ready, then I would like to get started. Okay. Yeah. So what we have is for next loop using a condition to exit the loop. What is the idea? In the first example that we discussed the other day, I had given the lower limit and upper limit. but tell me honestly will you really know the upper limit maybe you know the lower limit you know that the processing must start from the second row first row is usually for the headers we don't do anything in the first row but from second row our data begins so you'll start at second row will you end at 11th row is it a fixed thing it's not fixed right every day it might change so here's an idea what i'm doing over here is have a look at this j loop where i'm saying For j equal to two to ten lakh forty eight thousand five seventy six, I'm using a very big number. Does this number look familiar to you? Have you seen this number before anywhere? It's not a round figure. Number of rows in Excel. Correct. Very good. Number of Num rows in Excel. Number of rows in your Excel sheet. Correct. That's exactly what we are. Okay, about so uh, if I come to Excel sheet and press Control down arrow key, so you can see the last row that we have in the Excel sheet is ten lakh forty eight thousand five seventy six. So I am kind of you know I am I am considering a possibility. I am entertaining a possibility that I might have consumed each and every row in the sheet. So right from the second row till the last row of my worksheet, I would like to. Define that kind of a range. So when I press F8, I come here. The loop is going to begin when I press F8. Okay, prior to that we have dim J as double. So double is a variable type. Double has a good range of numbers. Double basically makes J numeric, and then it allows. Numbers. Okay. uh with great precision we can have numbers okay yeah. so that is what we mean by double now what i say over here is for j equal to 2 to 10 lakh 48576 that means potentially this loop might run right till the last row but uh, almost always would we be really keen to run actually run it till the last row so then what we do is we put a command at a suitable place to exit the loop prematurely okay, your loop has the potential to run up to the 10 lakh 48576 throw but much before that i lay down a condition so as as soon as that condition is satisfied i'll get out i'll exit the loop that is this condition okay what is this condition should we read okay uh, please perform this with me okay make sure you you are also pressing f8 and you have reached to this line and what it says is if cells j comma 1 equal to blank okay eighth row and first column if that happens to be a blank how do i indicate blank a pair of double inverted commas back to back okay this is the notation used in excel formulas also occasionally when you build excel formulas um uh, especially while writing an if function formula uh you will hint at blank value how by a pair of double inverted commas what will you do if if it is blank then you will exit 
for that is exit the for next loop this command exit for is for exiting this loop the exit for means exit this for next loop so it's an abbreviated command it's a conditional command so we are talking about ifs and buts okay if lhs equal to rhs over here if this is getting satisfied then you do this If this condition is not satisfied, then what are you doing? You are doing the same thing. You are doing exactly the same thing. Otherwise, that you have over here. Okay, only the variable is changing instead of I am using G. Clear? Okay. Let's uh, actually test it and see whether it works. I want all of you to test it with me. What is the value of J? The value of J is two. Okay. So I press F8. Uh, why did we go ahead? Because two comma one is it blank? You can check over here for yourself. In the first column, okay, two comma one means what? J is two. So this is two comma one. Two comma one means second row and first column. I think I'll turn it back to R1 C1 notation. Okay, second row, first column. I don't have it blank, so the macro proceeds. Okay, and then I can say cells J comma nine, J row, J row is second row, ninth column. Put this formula. When I press F8, the formula is put. When I press F8, the next formula is put in the tenth column, and then the value of J is two right now. When I say next J, two things happen. I go back first of all. I'm moving in circles. I go back, and secondly, the value of J is incremented by one. So now J bears a revisal. J is a variable, so J is only a container. It was containing two. Now two is replaced by three. It is incremented by one, so two becomes three. Okay, this is clear to everybody. Hello, is this part clear? What happened in the first row? Before it went, uh, went ahead and put the formulas, it tested it for a condition. Okay, what do you have? If I bring my mouse pointer here on top of this cells word, it shows me cells J comma one is SG underscore AB and ME. Definitely a, some value which is other than blank. So it doesn't proceed. It it doesn't execute whatever is written after then. Comes down and it executes the subsequent one. Okay, you can do one more thing, uh, just for having a better uh, experience in your testing and debugging. You can insert something known as a watch window. Okay, I'll come to watch window in a moment. But before that, is anyone having any questions till here? In the first round of this for next to using condition, does anyone have any question to ask? So when I run the function, it's giving me all values zero for J. So. Uh, sorry, I did not get you. I ran the function till the end of the loop. Now, when I come to the next one, it is giving me uh, J row all zero, zero. You got the incremented value, no? Uh -huh. In the ninth column. Where have, where have you reached? Where have you reached? No. I have reached to the next. Next J. Okay. Your J value is zero. When you bring your mouse pointer, your J is zero. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So should I delete all the J values and then try the loop again? Anyway, sorry. What do you mean by J? Are you referring to J column of Excel? J column. Nah, J that is the ninth column which you're saying, no? Uh -huh. Here you are getting zero. Yeah. Uh, here you should. Nee, J yeah. is the tenth column. In J you will get zero. I nee, am not talking about that J. That is fine. Here you will get zero. Huh? So you delete this and if you want you can run it. Okay. One by one. Yeah. But don't go ahead. You have gone much ahead. See, stay with me. Oh. Although it may sound a little boring. Stay with me. I have finished only one round. 
Okay. My question to everybody is: Have you understood the execution of the first round? I'm yet to reach to the till the last step. Okay, but as far as the first step, uh, there is a slight difference in the approach. I test for blank, and if it is not blank, then I go and execute these two lines. If it is blank, then I'm going to exit. This is the logical understanding. Okay, is everybody Sir. with me clear? Yes. May May I interrupt for a minute, please? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, it the way you have written that if the cell is uh, J uh, comma one and is equal to zero, then exit. It means in in no, a particular equal to blank then exit. Equal, blank e equal to order. blank and then exit blank. for that. Right. It means yeah. your data should start from the second row positively, otherwise it will exit. Sometimes some sometimes second people, row. Uh, you should have a continuous set of. Rows. Yes, from the after the header, you should have a continued data. Correct. It, there should be continuous record. Are you? Are you? Uh, perhaps I think what you wanted to share was what if I have got blank rows in between? Yes, that's what. It, that's okay, I think that's what uh, you are hinting at. So, okay, so this is one approach. Okay, uh, so we'll have a slightly better. Uh, approach to that. That's a good point. I think I'm addressing that in the next one. So I've got this for next loop using a variable to decide the end of the loop. In that, I will address your question. Okay. Uh, so that's a valid point, actually. I think uh, I hope everybody is clear on what Sir asked. He asked, "What if I've got blank rows in between? Like I've got data in the second row, then for some reason one line is left, then I've got the next record in fourth row." Then the next record in sixth row. Then the next record in eighth row. Okay, we'll come to that contingency. So we are adding a little more complication in our data, but that is going to you know that is like going into intermediate level. First, we are at a foundation level. So I'm just asking everybody. See, whatever we have discussed, there are there are more ifs and buts, more possibilities. We'll come to that later. Whatever is written, I hope that is clear to everybody. Right at the face of it, with the kind of data, right? So now, if so I have gone ahead, can I go behind? Mm. Uh, what I suggest is you bring it back. You bring your execution back here, and you uh, you execute this line again. So then again, you start from two. You, I just take the cursor there and I execute it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring this, bring this yellow line. arrow. Okay. No, 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 no. Bring this arrow back to four. Okay, okay. Run this for j equal to two once more. So you start again from two. Okay, right. got it, got it, got it. Sir, right. Let's I move ahead. Huh? You are somebody. Yeah. Sir. Why you are getting a runtime error? Uh, runtime error one thousand four. I say I have on uh, if cell j comma uh, on that uh, command. Have you by chance by mistake inserted a space or something? Or anything got deleted? F8. Not, not, nothing, nothing. Okay. Run Because error. that error one thousand four normally comes when you have a blank uh, when the sheet is not found. What I suggest is, uh, are you in a position to perhaps share your screen? Unless I see your screen, I won't be able to tell why exactly we are getting runtime error. Uh, just check if you have. Or let me just see. Your name is uh, who is speaking? Navin. Okay. Okay. Let me just see if I can give you that privilege. Application defined or object defined error. As I ek means sentence which we say. Can you do one thing? Actually, for some reason, I'm not getting the chat also, which is way too surprising for me. And so the chat messages are not getting loaded. Just one second. I see if I can join using the Teams app. Actually, I joined today quickly using the browser. On browser, the chat is not getting loaded for some reason. Uh, let me just come to. Teams. I have print screen. I have taken a print screen and sent to you on message. uh you yeah, sent to me on message okay i think i'll just check that 
that will be better i'll say message okay well exactly have you sent it The webinar message. My chats are not getting loaded actually. Uh, see, uh, there's some issue with this. Okay, just give me a moment. Just give me a moment. I'll just log in from the app. This team is actually. actually this code uh, because i'm i'm surprised because this code simply doesn't have any like this is pre written code not that we have composed it or something because when you write a code that time there are issues okay uh, okay let me just check on that no no that message is fine i want to see the line uh, just send me a uh message or send me a screenshot of the of the line you click on debug okay when you click on debug it will highlight the line okay in all likelihood there is an extra space or something extra has come up because the the line is similar to what we had previously written ah uh, let me see the second one see i think you have got two spaces after if after the word if na you have two spaces so try removing one space nahi i don't think so because kyunki i have opened just as it is as it is let me close this one okay do one thing just close the execution and then you restart by pressing f8 and reach to that by dragging just drag and bring it to that level and try executing it once more okay, because i don't see any reason for this runtime error it's a very simple command actually and uh, this command was a pre written command uh, let's make sure that it is exactly the way it's uh, written here I have opened okay. the, sir. I have opened the loop style. I don't have this uh, commands. It VBA is empty. I just send the screenshot in the chat. No, 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 no. Go to the file explorer. See, uh, let's get the basics right. Go to view tab. In view tab, you have project explorer. In project explorer, you might be somewhere in this workbook or something. Okay, open modules. Okay, sir, see, always open. your macro will be. Ha, huh, great. microsoft products sometimes you just restart and then it works so we have this uh, this some other thing you open modules and then you double click on loops then you will be able to see the code see so your code is a part of a module it's it's where is it it is residing on the on a module so we have a module called loops can you locate loops and as you double click you will be able to see okay so uh, i think let's proceed quickly uh because uh, we'll otherwise lose out on the time so uh, let me demonstrate the main point main point that i wanted to share was the watch window okay so i'll click on view and in Can view tab there is a watch screen sharing oh i think i stopped the screen sharing the work process All right. So can you see now? 
okay so this is the code it's the excel file here ah, yeah here's the excel file okay so now pay attention come to view tab in view tab we have watch window okay you click on watch window so this will add a window somewhere okay and in this watch window you can add expressions which you will keep watching now suppose i want to keep watching what's there in cells j comma 1 because my condition is if cells j comma 1 is blank then you exit so what is there in cells j comma 1 so i can always bring my mouse pointer here and then it shows but can i just glance instead of moving my mouse pointer if i just glance at this window it will tell me the value readily right so i can add a watch so to say okay can everyone see the watch window you need to go to view tab and click on watch window then you will be able to see the watch window right everyone can see that now in this blank white space that you have over here just do a right click and then add a watch okay on this blank white space do a right click add a watch and what ex which ex for yourself uh just have only the left hand side that is cells j comma 1 i am telling excel i am telling the vba window that keep watching this expression cells j comma 1 that's all watches can be of different types by default it is watch expression so let us just simply watch this expression let's keep an eye on this let's keep observing the value of this okay is everybody with me hello then press okay ओके क्वेश्चन में आपने लिखा है वो सेल करके कि यू हैव सिलेक्टेड सम सेल्स या तो आप लिख दीजिए या फिर आप सिलेक्ट अगर ऐसे सिलेक्ट करेंगे तो शायद बाय डिफॉल्ट वो दिखा देगा व्हेरएवर इज योर कर्सर मे बी इट विल शो इट बाय डिफॉल्ट ओके और यू कैन राइट आल्सो इट्स अ सिंपल एक्सप्रेशन सो यू कैन जस्ट टाइप दिस आउट इफ यू वांट सेल्स मेक श्योर यू राइट सेल्स एंड नॉट सेल ओके कॉमन मिस्टेक कमिटेड इज पीपल राइट्स इन सिंगुलर You must write plural cells into round brackets J comma one. Just write it or pick it. I leave that to you. At the end of it, we should have the expression here. Okay, and it is showing me the value. Under value column, can you see the value? So instead of bringing my mouse here, I can just look at here, and I can see oh, what's the value? This is the value. Right? This is how I can watch the expression. okay now i would like to go ahead now what is the value of j the value of j is 3 okay 3 comma 1 is it blank it is something other than blank right so how excel will behave when i press f8 it goes ahead okay and now the subsequent two lines are familiar lines so i'll move a bit faster it's the same thing instead of i i am using j that's the only difference so when i press f8 and f8 i get the next computation then next j okay what is j presently 3 should i keep watching j just for fun i can add one more watch you know instead of bringing the mouse pointer every time to j and demonstrating to you that it is indeed 3 or whether it is still 2 or whether it has moved ahead with 4 easiest way is i can add a watch here okay so i'll do add one more watch right click add a watch this time i would like to watch simply j you can either write an expression involving multiple things or you write simply the variable name whatever it is anything you can write you can also write j into 4 j divided by 2 anyhow okay when i press okay button now here's j and what is the value of j value of j is 3 the type is also shown type is double that's what we had declared we have declared it to be a double type okay now let's move let's move on further now i press f8 what happens to j when i press f8 j gets incremented to 4 and now what is the value of j comma 
because j is 4 obviously cells j comma 1 will be 4 comma 1 do you agree so what do i have in the fourth row and first column now in the fourth row first column the value is slightly different sg underscore abgv and the same value is reproduced here in watch window okay the value is same or value is different in any case it is not a blank yes or no so because it is not a blank how will the macro respond to this when i press f8 it? it goes down it doesn't exit it goes down and then it executes for the fourth row when i press f8 for the fourth row i get the difference or the computation rather and then the difference then next j makes it 5 okay are you understanding how it's happening okay is everybody with me hello are you able to get it stay yeah. with me uh don't lag behind at the same time don't go ahead also because you might finish this whole loop you might have a much better understanding i'm going at an average pace but suppose you if you have a clear understanding you may get a little tempted to go ahead okay because you might find my discussion pace to be a little slower because i'm trying to take everybody together so definitely i'm going at a at an average pace but then if you are faster you may get tempted to go ahead in that process i might like to uh, demonstrate something you will miss that so at the cost of being bo uh, slightly bored stay with me is my appeal to everyone okay neither go ahead of me nor lag behind too much so that uh, you will feel con completely confused okay uh, uh, make sure that you don't get distracted elsewhere or that you give your 100% focus here and then stay with me now i find this a little boring that i have to keep pressing f8 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 again and again i have to cover till 11th row right my data runs till 11th row it's a little boring to keep pressing f8 after one or two or three rounds you have picked up what's happening correct can i quickly swiftly move to the 11th row okay this is a loop don't be in a uh don't hurry and press this continue if you press this continue then macro will go at its own speed right till the next last line okay before you know it macro will be through as far as this entire sub is concerned i don't want to execute the entire sub my idea is very simple i would like to know or i would like macro to perhaps take a pause at the 11th row okay till 11th row let it proceed and at the 11th row which is the last row i want macro to... okay so you can add one more watch okay let's try this once more i'll do a right click and i'll add a watch okay this time my expression is going to be j equal to 11 why am i writing j equal to 11 why not any other number simple reason is 11th row is my last row bearing a record so i am writing the expression to be j equal to 11 and a slightly different approach i am not going to watch the expression i am going to break when value is true can you see break when value is true break means take a break halt okay halt the moment j becomes 11 till then you go at your own speed but take a break when j becomes 11 okay another variant that we have over here is break when value changes okay if the variable remains the same you are not interested if the variable changes its value i would like to see why the variable's value changed in that case you can select this third option break when value changes right now i'm going to select break when value is true is everyone with me let's add this watch define the expression choose the second option and then press okay so we have a we have a watch simply j and then we have another watch j equal to 11 where i am going to break when it is true so basically i am interested in true or false is the idea is very simple is j equal to 11 i am making a statement here j equals to 11 am i telling the truth or am i lying so right now x says no this is a false statement 
right now j is not 11 what is j j is 5 5 is not equal to 11 so the evaluation is false we will break when it is true has everyone put this watch okay right click add watch and i hope you have defined the expression i hope you have chosen the second option if you are with me now only and only after adding this watch now you can go ahead and press this green triangular button continue Okay, while you are asking the VBA to continue, it will break automatically when the condition is satisfied. When the watch is watch value becomes true. So when I press this continue button, at once all these records are processed, right? At a single click, all these records were processed by Macro at its own speed, and it halted, it stopped, it took a break when this became true. Now, J is 11 from 5 to 11 became in a split second. Now it is true. Now it is it has broken. Have you understood this part? Did you understand what happened? Hello? Is everyone understanding? Unfortunately, my uh, yes. chat today is not working. Okay, so I'm just... circles like this it's not displaying so if chance. we had not put this so, watch also we would have gone to the next loop now if j is completed the 11th row no then it will finish all the execution it has no reason to stop now if you don't put a watch like this and you press this green button why should it stop at any point it will go ahead it will finish the entire loop then it will go to the next portion of your code it will finish that also it will keep proceeding in fact, it will finish till ends up. Even ends up will be executed. And this all execution will happen at macro's own speed. So before you are you realize you are through. So unless you put an expression like this or some other method, uh, generally speaking, if you press this button, there is no reason for macro to stop. It will keep on going. Unless it encounters an error, it won't stop. It will simply move ahead and finish it at its own speed okay so you won't be able to interrupt uh, sorry for interruption if the j value is equal to 11 the loop will not be continued j value equal to the trial then the loop will be uh, discontinued am i right ah, so i want to show i want to show the last record last record is not yet executed the moment j turned 11 when when did j turn 11 so j was 10 then this command was executed next j on execution of next j from 10 it became 11 okay and it came back here the moment it became 11 it broke so effectively i have not put the formulas in the 11th row but i'll show that okay i don't mind that if you want you can put 12 you can watch it at 12 if you want okay so let me just show it for the benefit of everyone what happens at the 11th row okay j has just now turned 11 now, what's the value at j comma 1? That is 11th row and first column. In 11th row, first column, what I have is sg underscore baeuf. Okay, in j comma 1, I have got sg underscore baeuf, not a blank. So, it goes ahead, puts the formula, puts the second formula. Next j, I'm using f8, f8, f8 to execute this. Now, what is the value of j comma 1? If I glance at my watch window, this is blank. Now, that value column is blank for j11, j comma 1. Okay, j comma 1 is returning blank. What is to be done? Now, this condition is satisfied. So, observe carefully at j equal to 12. When I press F8, it goes to the right side after then. After then, I have exit for that is now highlighted in yellow, which means this portion is about to be executed. Why? Because for simple reason, I have nothing in my 12th row. And now if I press F8, it exits the loop. It jumped out of this loop. Exit 4 is going to exit this for next loop and we'll go to the next line. The next line could be something else. Okay, have you understood this approach? Sir, ek bar what was this approach? Haan, uh, repeat kar lunga mein. See, I'm here. 
ओके एट सम पॉइंट आफ्टर 11 दिस नेक्स्ट डे गॉट एग्जीक्यूटेड हां फ्रॉम वो वी एंटर्ड ना सेल्स जे1 करके लूप वॉच वॉच एड वॉच फ्रॉम दैट हां फ्रॉम देयर कैन यू रिपीट वंस अगेन प्लीज इज इट पॉसिबल वहां से ये तो हम काफी आगे चले आ गए सो यू गॉट लॉक्ड ऑफ फॉर समथिंग No, no. Actually, Because I tried, but it was not working. So, in I used what was not working? Adding watches was not working. Uh, the the value or something was sub sub a a a b v g something was coming. Later on, it was not working. So I didn't. No, no. What I'm trying to say. Could you add the three watches? Could you add the watches? No, no. Ha. So let me just understand where you are stuck up. So. You are not able to add the watches. Just do a right click, add a watch, okay, yeah. and write your expression. See, expression needs to be written very clearly. The expression I have got three expressions which I am watching. Okay, one is cells J comma one. Okay, so you must type cells open bracket J comma one. Simply that much. Okay, this is one expression. What is the watch type? Watch expression. Okay. When you press OK, then it will be watched. Ah, uh, one thing is I don't know what you did, but if you have pressed directly this green button, your entire macro. Okay. Before giving an expression, we have to click on that uh, cell. If cell J one, it should be highlighted. See. Ah, uh, tell me one thing. In your watches, can you see blank, blank, blank? Yes. Ah, uh, that's because you are through completely. So actually, your macro execution has stopped. See, this watch comes into picture when you are in the break mode. Are you in the break mode? First, check that in your title. Can you see the word break? If you can't see the word break in the title, then you first launch the program once more. Press F8. You will come to sub. The sub will get highlighted. Sub loops. watch did not get defined clearly and when you press that green button it finished the execution of everything and happened so fast you may not have realized it but your entire macro was executed including that last line ends up so it ended the sub routine and it went out so that's where all the watches are returning blank yes so uh, should i do again the expression so it's as good as yeah you will have to do that part again just make sure you have defined the watches correctly look at my screen uh, view yeah, and my, look at the way the watches are defined it's not coming at my end so that's why i was okay now it's highlighted as huh? you said it should be shown as a break on the top of the uh, menu correct screen. correct so see this watch that. comes into picture it's like you are asking the score you know what's the score okay the score as a concept let's say somebody is batting and what is the score or what how many runs this player has scored that comes into picture only when the innings is on right if the innings is not on there is no match being played okay today no match is being played you are asking what is score of how many runs uh, rohit sharma has scored there cannot be any answer for that it's a blank it's inapplicable right so that's exactly what is happening unless you start the execution of your macro there's no point in watching we are watching a variable or an expression involving variable but simply the execution is not on in that case how that uh, variable can assume values if it cannot assume values it's an empty container so it it will show blank okay and uh, then even the concept of uh, breaking when value is true is also not applicable yeah Yeah, after doing that one, I uh, your expression and expression is not showing in the expression. It says cells J one in the value. It's saying me as an application does define or object defined something error. Yeah, uh, can you show me a? Can you again share the screenshot of the same? It's a. It's actually a simple expression. I think you have shared a screenshot. Okay.
एप्लीकेशन डिफाइंड और ऑब्जेक्ट वेरियंट इंटीजर What is your value of J? See, you have not added watches. Please add the watches. J or I is not added. What is the value of J, by the way? Just uh, share the value of J. Okay, unless application defined or object. Your watch looks okay to me. I think your J is not having any value at this moment. You have directly jumped here. I think you have directly jumped to this line. That is also incorrect. You need to initiate your loop, na? You have started a new round of your macro. You need to initiate your loop. You first run this line for j equal to two, and then let it automatically come here. See, this is a portion of code. This is a one hole for next loop. You suddenly, if you jump here, there is no value of j to begin with. Okay, or j is an empty variable. Okay, uh, Navin, I think what you need to do is you need to uh, run this particular line first. Then it will work. Okay, I think I'll move on uh, in the interest of time. Okay, we'll see the other things. If any pending, we can connect later. Okay, let me go to the next type. Okay, I hope logically everybody is following. Okay, please stay with me. That's why the critical part is you must stay with me. I'm actually going very slowly. Okay, I could have gone much faster, but I'm deliberately going slowly. But you must stay with me and you must do exactly the same things that i'm share telling you so then we'll be together okay otherwise uh, you might get lost in this whole thing okay uh, so uh, where was i so this got exited okay uh, i use this other loop also sorry other watch also and using this watch it broke when j equal to 11 then i ran that and then eventually i came here at some point okay so it it got stuck here you might wonder why this why it did not get stuck here okay it cannot stick here after next j after exiting this next j you have this this line which is green in color can it stop here it cannot stop at a green line because green line is not an executable code can it stop at dim last track as wrong long so it never stops at dim command dim command is only a declaration Okay, then we come to the next one. That is SA is equal to rows dot count. So somebody had asked this question. What if you have blank rows in between? So let's try to address that. Now this is one approach. One approach is using a condition to exit. You give the last row, but practically you are never interested to. You are never keen to stretch it really till the last row. Okay. So now the another idea is this. Okay, you will use another variable called ss okay we haven't declared the variable okay while last track is declared ss is not declared okay you can take the liberty and not declare if you don't declare then by default it is variant variant type is the biggest container that you have okay do i have the variables file open no if you open that variable files and see for variant then variant has highest memory but then the memory is minuscule it is in some kbs doesn't matter not only not even in kbs just in some 16 bytes or something so that hardly matters in here okay sas equal to rows dot count when you execute this what happens sas to begin with is blank is empty when i press f8 try it at your end when you press f8 now sas is giving you the entire row count What is the row count? Ten lakh forty-eight thousand five seventy-six. How many rows do I have in my Excel sheet? Ten lakh forty-eight five seventy-six. Okay. Is everyone with me? Hello. So we have this 
sas equal to rows dot count and now the next command is cells sas comma a dot select so this can be another style of ref reference wherein for column either i can put the number 1 or i can write a in double quotes i am using cells command okay in cells command column can be numeric or alphabetic depending upon r1 c1 or a1 and you can choose either of them so if you want to stick to a you can write a but then a cannot be simply written a needs to be written in double inverted commas so cells sas comma a in double inverted comma dot select just observe what happens to your excel sheet in my excel sheet by default it is the a row which is selected but now if i press f8 what happens when i press f8 i jump to this cell is that your experience too i jump to this cell directly this cell is the last row 10 lakh 48576 and the column is the first column that is a column okay 10 lakh 48576 and a a is one okay is everybody with me i hope this line is clear is is cell ko select karo okay cells 10 lakh 48576 comma a ko select karo that is how we will read this in english now the next line is very interesting the next line which is highlighted in yellow color is extremely interesting it says selection dot end excel up dot select so a few things are happening here selection what is your selection if you glance at your excel excel sheet that the selection is a single cell and that cell is row number 10 lakh 48576 column number 1 then we have dot end and which end excel up okay so this second word means the upper end in short this is nothing else but this is equivalent to control up arrow key so what excel wants you to do is press control up arrow key then you will go to the upper end and wherever you reach you select that particular cell so this selection dot end into bracket excel up dot select means it is equivalent if you are recording something okay if you are doing the recording and you press control up arrow key this is exactly the line that will get generated the recorder you can try it uh, later on okay maybe tomorrow you can try that you know whatever navigational keyboard shortcuts you know like control up arrow control shift up arrow say control page up control page down how excel responds to each of them you try them okay do a lot of recording at this juncture simple simple work that you do you sort data you apply filters keep recording and as you record macros whether they make sense or no whether they are small or big generally keep them small just take one one or two steps and then stop the recorder at every step as at every action just check what kind of code gets generated and are you following it okay so that way your familiarity with vba will increase now if i press f8 what it does is control up arrow and it hits you so what have i done in the previous lines have you understood what i have done first of all i determined how many rows are there in my excel sheet i am using rows dot count so i'm just uh, considering a possibility what if uh, microsoft decides to upgrade the matrix size in future today i have got 10 lakh rows what if microsoft makes it a matrix of 1 crore rows okay whatever is the number of rows your number of rows could be anything just count them that job i gave to excel itself and capture that in ss variable so ss is a variable which catches this count how many rows the whatever is the number of rows and once i know which row is the last row i go to that last row in the a column why am i targeting a column you must target that column which will be 100% filled 
Okay, if there is a record, this column will be filled. Identify such column. For example, a column. You will have a security code. If you are doing buying or selling, of what are you doing? That is of security. So if you are going to buy and sell securities, there has to be a security code in the first place, correct? So that will be in column one. I cannot have column one empty. Yes or no? There will be column one something. So I go to the bottom end of my worksheet. From there, I do a control up arrow key. And at the end of this third line, I go and hit the bottom end of my data. From the bottom end of my worksheet, I come up and then I hit the bottom end of my data. And now the next line is very interesting. It says last track underscore manual. I don't know why it is last track underscore manual. Should have been last track simply. Okay, I'll take it at face value. Okay, let's not change the variable. It is last track underscore manual equal to active cell dot row. Okay. Now press F8 and see what gets captured. If you press F8 and you check what is last track underscore manual. I get the number 11. Are you getting the number 11? Is that your experience? Yes or no? Hello? Is this working? Yes. Is your yes. macro execution, is it going to the bottom, yes, coming up? Yes. Is it happening? Yeah. It's happening. Oh, yes. Great. So have you understood? Uh, so to answer the query of uh, sir who had asked, what if there are blank rows? If there are blank rows, then you should insert this kind of a command, this kind of a code, wherein it goes to the bottom, comes up, and that way determines the blank, uh, you know, determines the last row, sorry. And then if you glance a little to the bottom, okay, I'll skip one line and I'll come to 4k equal to 2. Look at the way I'm writing. I'm saying from k equal to 2 to last track. Okay. So first I determine last track. Whatever is my last record, I capture that in a variable and then the last record number, which is that variable that I write. So my starting point is two, but my ending point is that variable. Because I know precisely now that it's going to run till 11th row and that I've captured that number 11 is captured in a variable. Once I give this variable, there is no, no command needed to exit. It will run from two to last track. Last track is a variable. Once that variable value is reached, then it will finish on its own. Getting the idea? The idea is this. Go to the bottom, come to the top, determine which is the last row, store it in a variable and run your loop till the upper end of that variable, till the, till the value of that variable. Okay, your upper end, upper uh, limit is going to be the value of that variable. Sir, can I ask you a question here, please? Yeah, yeah. See, uh, you were telling that the problem of uh, there existing a blank row in between the data uh, and this, this particular uh, portion of the code will take care of that. Did you say that? This particular portion will... It may not, no, it may not, no, because um, the, the question is, suppose no, there are no, some no, no, three no. rows of yeah, data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some three rows of data, then a blank row, and another three rows of data. The, uh, the the portion of the code where it exits at the stage of blank, so at the fourth row it will get exited without executing the remaining rows. No. I'm not putting this line na, in my code. Okay. This line was present in the previous thing where I was putting a condition where I was saying if cells j comma one equal to blank, then exit for. But this line is absent in this k. Okay. 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 But you have a valid point in one way okay. that how do I handle the blank rows? Okay, because you don't want to put the formula for the blank rows. What's the point? If you know that the row is blank. So that's another point. I will handle it separately. But because there is no line which was effectively serving as a condition to exit the loop, that line is absent. That line has been uh, dropped from this composition okay. of the loop. Okay, so okay. it won't exit that way. Okay. okay. Or uh, can I ask, ask, can I ask something? You know, suppose if there is a uh, line of code 
which is opposite to this XLR. Suppose there is a blank uh, row. So mm -hmm. something which is opposite to the Excel app will take it to the next row where data is available, no? Yeah, yeah. That may also It goes work. to the bottom end, no? See, see, you will have blank rows in between. Let me demonstrate. Are, uh, let me demonstrate. See. We have a blank row. Another blank row. Another one. Another one, and so on. What my macro code is doing is it's going to the bottom end of the worksheet and from then doing a control up. Even if you have blank rows in between, your last row will be a data, right? Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Understood. Thank you. Ah. Understood. Clear. Yeah, yeah. Clear, na? So maybe after last row, again, there is a blank row, but that doesn't stop you. So it just comes to the from bottom till here and it hits it. So perfect, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. So just do a bit of undo because the program runs till the 11th row. Okay. Yeah. So let's move further. Now we have this last track over here. Then I'm saying now the same thing is done in a single step. What is last track? So we have last track manual and last track. Uh, so two variables are there. The second variable, last track, is compressing this entire activity in a single line. So while you could always do that over multiple lines, and I'll strongly recommend that. Okay, in the beginner stage, you should not try to compress the code. Take your own sweet time. Write small, small lines, one small thing at a time, and then keep developing the idea further and further. Okay, don't try to be efficient in your code writing. Okay, uh, efficiency should not be at the cost of simplicity, at the cost of uh, being complicated. Okay, don't lose out on your simplicity. Simplicity is of paramount importance so that you can, if you have written in a nice, simple and organized way, you can revisit the macro in future and still you will be able to understand what's written. Okay, that should be your approach today and in future at any point of time. Nonetheless, what I'm doing is after some degree of proficiency and skill development, you may consider this second uh, approach or second avatar of the same code. When well, I'm doing everything in at once, what I'm saying is the moment you capture SS, okay, SS value is determined, then alternatively you can define the line this way, where in one step I do the whole thing. Okay, if I have to read this in English, how will I read that? Cells SS comma A may jaw and SS is 10,48,576. So go to the cell 10,48,576 A column. Waha se up upper jaye or jobi row pe takrange or row ka row ka number yaha pe store ki jaye. So this entire story I am telling in a single line. Okay, this is the cell I am targeting dot end excel up dot row and everything happens in a single line. If somebody has a question. I think somebody had a question. Somebody was saying something. Okay, we can try that. Uh, no harm in executing it. Last track, I have not yet executed this line. So to begin with, it is zero. It was defined as uh, long. So it's numeric. But not uh, no value was assigned to it as such. So it begins at zero. Now observe very carefully. Please note that my cell pointer is at A1. At least at my, in my case, it is at A1. I don't know where it is in your case. Let it be wherever it is. And 